Good morning. Everybody have a good night's sleep. Oh. Bright and early this morning, up and at it. Gonna learn all about gathering. We're gonna touch gathering on sewing machines and how to gather using overlockers. Good morning, Miss Joanne. Good morning, Kathy, Miss Jane, Sharon. Pat, good morning, everybody. Everybody got their coffee, their tea, their hot chocolate, breakfast. Hmm. Oh my God, all sorts of stuff. So, a rare Saturday that I am going to teach breakfast club, and then I don't have another class today. So I can work the floor and hopefully maybe get some embroidery done. We'll see. I'm not going to be too goal ambitious here this morning for um, embroidery today, but that's okay. That won't leave me any uh, any disappointment if I don't get it, don't get to it this morning. If I don't ha don't set the bar high. Good morning. Everybody's coming in. Sewing machine set up today. I got a serger set up for you. Hopefully, everybody will be able to see everything, hear everything. Good morning. Oh. So that exciting, uh, or the girls are over, mom is over there wrapping all the fabric and putting everything, stickering everything that I talked about last night that we're gonna um, have out and ready for you. If you've sent an email or a text message with a request for anything, um, from last night's five at live at five um, preview. Um, it has been pulled and is awaiting your visit. So it's all been taken care of this morning. Okay. Just wait another minute or two. Get everybody in here. And we will start. going to show you, we're going to talk about presser foot, um, Bernina feet, um, but you can, um, I'm 99% sure all of these feet are available for any, any machine manufacturer that's out there. We're going to be talking about specifically about foot number six, foot number three or three C, 16 and 16 wide, and a ruffler. Okay, and then on a the serger, we'll be talking about a um, gathering foot, okay, um, as well. So, good morning. All right, let's get started. All right, so you can. Good morning. I brought the since I'm not facing the right direction, I brought the Swiss Alps to us this morning in my background, but I still haven't figured that out. So I'm gonna have to pull the second TV over and put it behind me and then we can have mirror images. That is the first time that the classroom TVs have been turned on since March 13th. Um, so it's, <laughs> Yes. So yeah, I uh, I was like, oh, it came on. It worked. Exciting. You know, eight months and it, he hasn't been uh, been used. So that's okay though. All right. So let's go over to the sewing machine. We're going to start with the um, techniques that we can do on a sewing machine first. Now, many of you are very um, well familiar with your basic gathering technique of sew a basting stitch right so with i gotta take the shoe off i can't i can't do this with shoes on so oh, i'm gonna have to move my hand out of the way 
with gathering, you want to make sure that one, you have your upper thread and lower thread um, on top of the machine, okay? Because you're going to want both thread tails, okay? So you're going to want to pull your thread up. So we're going to do the standard base, okay? So we're going to take our stitch length as high as it will go, okay? And you're going to stitch. Now, typically, um, you would be, depending on what you're doing and things along that line, sometimes they will tell you to um, stitch two lines of sewing, okay? And that's just gonna help you get a little more of a consistent fuller gather. For time purposes here right now, I'm just gonna stitch one line, okay? For my newer Berninas, if you have the tie-on function, um, turned on on your machine, you're gonna want to turn off the tie on function. And if you have any sort of not tying function activated when you press your scissors, you wanna turn that off. You don't want the machine to be tying any knots. And you really don't wanna be using your scissors either because we wanna pull a long tail, okay? Now, once we pull a long tail, let me come back over here to and stop that picture, okay? You have your um, basting across the top. Now, if this was in a circle, they would come back around. You wanna make sure that you don't overlap your beginning and end. You actually would be better off to leave a slightly, a um, little bit of space between it. You can, pull your upper thread or your lower thread. Um, you're just gonna pull one. You're not gonna pull both. You're gonna pull one of them. However, if you are gathering to one side, if you keep pulling and you didn't leave a long thread tail here, you're gonna end up pulling that thread out and you will just be defeating your purpose. So I'm gonna show you what I do. Um, so I will take and I'll put a pin in one end. I'm gonna take both thread tails and I'm gonna wrap it like a figure eight around that pin. That's gonna hold on to that thread tail so that as I pull this thread tail, that thread tail won't pull this direction and unravel. So you're gonna, you'll pull a little bit and then you're gonna to want to kind of even that out and then pull a little more and then help coax it down. If you go too far, you know, especially if we're talking, I mean, this is only like an eight inch square here, but if you're talking like a 40 some odd inch long or 60 inch long loop, you just get to pull a little bit and then ease it around and pull a little bit. You do want to use a stronger thread. This is definitely not something that I want to be using um, 50 weight for, especially if you're going through two layers of fabric you are um, got a long amount to um, to gather. Let me get my words here. I've already had. I've already got my caffeine for the morning, so I can't use that as an excuse for not having words today. So you could tie a knot at the beginning, but sometimes the knots. If you don't, I'm using a polyester thread here. Sometimes the knot, depending on how small you make the knot, um, it can uh, pop through the fabric. You could backstitch as well, but then it doesn't do any gathering. This way you could still undo the pin and then you could gather from this direction as well, okay? So that's why I just wrap this around a pin. That way I still have the ability to gather from both ends, especially if this was, you know, 40, 50, 60 inches long, I would probably gather about halfway from one direction and then gather halfway from the other direction. And that will just help, you know, get it even and you're not constantly working from one direction. Okay. Now, typically, like I said, if this was a garment, usually they have you do one at like an eighth of an inch and then a, a, a set a stitching at three eighths of an inch and then you pull both of them. It just helps to keep that seam allowance a little bit neater, help you get a finer, cleaner um, gather. Because the last thing that we want to hear when we gather is we want to hear that thread pop because then, you know, you got to start all over again.
So I usually will switch to my polyester or 28 weight cotton or even 40 weight cotton just to um, make sure that it doesn't pop. However, if you are going to be stitching something thicker, okay? So maybe not even thicker in terms of um, home deck, but maybe a double folded piece of cotton, okay? So you've got a piece that you're gonna fold in half and you wanna gather this top edge and you are struggling to get it gathered without thread breaking, no matter what thread um, you use. Uh, this next technique is what I would, I would use. I just used my number one foot for that first, for this first technique. Um, yeah, for this, I just use my one foot. You can use any foot as long as you can straight stitch with it. I'm now gonna ch change over to um, foot number six, okay? So foot six is what we call it an embroidery foot. We're using it for this little tiny hole that's in the front of the foot. This hole and this foot, so foot six and foot 39 or 39C, okay? They are the same feet, except 39 has got a clear sole on it, but it also has a hole down the middle, okay? So I'm gonna take a piece of cording, okay? And this is just a uh, pearl cotton, okay? Uh, anything that you can slide in that hole of that foot, okay? So I'm gonna, that in there. Sorry for my arm. Okay. I am going to um, pull a thread tail with that um, cording out the back. We're going to change to a zigzag stitch. Okay. The width of the zigzag just needs to be big enough to jump over the cord, okay? It doesn't need to be giant, depending on how thick your cord is, anything like that. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna couch this cord down, okay? And that is going to be what we pull to make it gather, okay? So let me, I've got, I'm actually just using the, um, here, the, um, just did that. I heard my bobbin decide one of those. So give me one second. See, you get. See, it happens to me too, ladies. <laughs> there we go. Now that I'm all twisted up here. All right, start over again. What we're going to be doing is basically couching this fabric, this yarn or pearl cotton or whatever you're using here to um, couch it in place. And then we're going to um, pull that instead of pulling thread to get it together, okay? So let me, and the foot is what's going to pull this thread. So if my thread is over here, my yarn, my floss, whatever you're using, um, is gonna pull that cord to where it needs to be, okay? As long as I keep it in the front of the foot, Open-ended. 
I am going to come back to a straight stitch and I'm going to uh, straight stitch across the end. Oop, not on the base though. Um, I act together here this morning. Goodness gracious. I think it's because I have my coat on because I was chilly. I want to straight stitch across the end of the cord um, so that it holds it in place for me. So I've gone down just straight stitching back and forth across. Hold it for me. You could leave the tail and wrap just like we did um, with the regular thread, wrap it around a pin to hold on to it. That type of thing that will work too. It's a loop or anything along that lines. So you can see small zigzag. This was the default setting of there that I used pull cotton size eight, I believe. Okay. And let me cut this fabric. Strip and hold the cord and pull. Okay, and then you've just got a little bit more. Um, you can pull tighter and pull harder. Okay, so especially if you've got really thick fabric that you're trying to gather. It's going to be really um, double layer of fabric, things along that lines. Zigzagging over cord is going to be more helpful um, to do that without having your thread break. Now you would do this inside your seam allowance so that it would ultimately be covered um, in the final um, step of the, of the construction. So you would never see that zigzag or anything like that. You would just see, when I sewed this in, you would just see that, okay? So that's gathering over a cord. It can be done with any foot really, but you're with, with 39 or six, you have the ability, the cord stays exactly where it needs to be. It feeds in straight and you're not because the moment you stitch into the cord, it's not gonna gather. So it's nice to have those two particular feet, one of those feet to keep that from happening so that you can um, make sure that you're not having to rip out and do again. So again, this is 39 and 39C and there is a hole right in the center there that you can feed cord. We also use this foot for, um, couching and decorative stitching and things like that. Um, what's nice about, you're gonna be like, well, Amy, that looks a lot like 34C or 34. It is very similar to 34. 34 does not have a hole. And this foot has shorter toes on it than the 34. So similar, but not the same. Okay. Now I'm gonna talk about, oop, get my foot off that foot cushion. Um, using a number three foot together, okay? Foot number three is your manual buttonhole foot, okay? So you're like, well, Amy, if it's a manual buttonhole, why do, why am I going to use it to gather with? We're going to also continue to gather over cord, but we're going to talk about gathering thick, thick fabric. So let's say home deck weight fabric that you're trying to gather for a ruffle, maybe even a bed skirt, which is, you know, yards and yards and miles and miles of fabric. Um, you can, so what I have here is I have a uh, denim, okay, that we're going to use this technique to gather with. The stitch that we are going to use is let me get your machine open here. Let's go find foot number three. It's gonna be a pain, and so let's 
just go to foot number one here. We're going to use the gathering stitch, which on your machine is going to be, let me find it, number 12. Okay. This stitch right here kind of looks like a mountain range on both sides, maybe some teeth that you see there. And now I'm going to go to foot three. Okay. So this stitch is specifically the gathering stitch. Okay. And cords, things like that. I use this for um, shearing with elastic. Uh, we zigzag over top of elastic to give that sheared effect, which you see in a lot of like kids summer garments for girls and stuff. The tops that are real zigzagged and tight um, type thing. So that is the stitch that we're going to use. We are going to um, come back to the machine here. Stitch, and I'm going to get some used. Okay. Got an overabundance of embroidery floss or anything like that in your in your life that you don't use anymore. You can use that. Like I said, this is pearl cotton eight. I'm going to cut a length of it that's at least as long as my project or longer. Okay. We're going to wrap. We're going to loop it. Okay. So I fold it in half and we're going to put that loop around the middle toe of this foot. Okay. Now there are two grooves in the bottom of this foot. Okay. So we've got two grooves. This would normally remember this would be a buttonhole. So these would be the left and the right side of your buttonhole. So the cord is going to ride in these grooves, okay? So I can see right back here, I can see straight that my cord is in those grooves. And what's gonna happen is that as I start sewing, the machine is gonna zigzag left, zigzag right, zigzag left, zigzag right. And it's gonna be pulling this cord through the stitching that it's doing, okay? So you're going to see it start to gather almost instantly. <laughs> okay, so every once in a while you just stop and kind of flatten it out, help the machine pull the, the cord through. And again, you would be doing this uh, inside the seam allowance of your project. Okay. I'll lengthen it up just a little. Let's go a little bit faster. And you can see it's already covering the loop off the tail. Okay. And you can see it's already gathering for me. Okay. So let me come over to the camera here so that you can see. Get a pair of scissors. Which I obviously need to strap around my neck here attach more things to me this morning. Big cow neck sweater, big heavy coat. <laughs> oh, I should have taken some off before I got started. Okay. So here is what it looks like. Okay. So this was normal stitch length here at this hand and here I just increased it so that um, if you didn't want as tight of a gather, you could make adjustments if you wanted and or if you were trying to you know speed it up like I was. And then you just pull those cords. Okay. Just like we would if you were doing um, any other technique, but this way you have um, a little bit more. I mean, I'm 
I'm pulling, okay? And so you can help it along. Okay. And I must have stitched that one cord I must have stitched at the beginning. And there it is. Okay. You would, I would never be able to have done this with just using one strand of thread or even two strands of thread. I am 99% sure it would have popped over that. Yes. So you can see the cord is separate and there's a zigzag on one side and then it goes over to the other side. Okay. So instead of just using a zigzag over one cord, this is the same thing. It zigzags over both cords at the same time, okay? So that is foot number three or three C, depending on what machine that you have um, in your life. But it's also a manual buttonhole foot for anyone that doesn't have a brain. Okay. No hole in the foot, correct. All right, I'm gonna have to take this jacket off because y'all got me all warm. Dr. Mike's back here cleaning machines, cleaning something. Buttonhole foot. Oh, cleaning a buttonhole foot. Okay. Yeah, there's no hole in the foot. You're just looping. You're looping the whole the cord around the middle toe of this foot, okay? And then pulling the cord tails to the back side, okay? Now, next up is a ruffler, okay? Now, a ruffler, a ruffler doesn't so much, and so gathering is a, what I like to call an inconsistent ruffle, okay? And so this will give you um, not a consistent, nice little pleated uh, ruffle, okay? So a ruffler, you can control a little bit more in terms of how close together things are, how far apart they are. There are a lot of things that go into a ruffler in terms of how thick is your fabric, you know, so there's a lot of variances. So the first thing to notice is that one, there is a lever on the front of the ruffler that is marked 0, 1, 6, and 12. That references how many stitches the machine takes before it pushes in another section of fabric or pushes in a pleat, okay? So it could go every stitch it pushes in a pleat, every six stitches, and every 12 stitches. Now, if you remember, you have the ability to adjust your, seam, your stitch length. So every six stitches could be really close together if you're using a small stitch length or really far apart if you're using a giant stitch length, okay? So you can vary it, various a ruffler that way, and I'm gonna show you um, ruffling. Zero means that it does no ruffling. It's just, you're just sewing with it. This is a straight stitch only foot, okay, um, on it. And then there is a little screw on the front of the foot, okay? This screw is going to alter how deep the pleat is that gets pushed in. So as this foot moves, you see that little piece? And so that pushes in this piece right here is gonna come out and then push in a pleat. And the amount or the depth of that is controlled by the screw. So that's another adjustment that you can make with this foot depending upon the thickness of your fabric and things along that lines. Okay, so let's go put on a ruffler. Now a ruffler is going to be very similar to um, what we uh, how we would put a walking foot on, okay? With the exception that this goes over where your needle screws in at from the front, okay? So, where did I get that lined up? I'm trying to do this with my 
hand out of the way of the camera. Okay. So this little guy goes on over where your um, foot is at, over where your needle screw's at. And it is a straight stitch only with the needle in center. Okay? The needle does not go anywhere but center. Okay. All right. I'm going to start with a the, the foot on a setting of one. I'm going to put my fabric between these two pieces. Okay? We're not going underneath. We're going between. Okay? Now, there is a guide on this side that brings it all the way over to like a one inch seam allowance. You don't need um, to come all the way to the right in that foot. It's just there. You can, you don't have to. Okay. So I'm going to bring my fabric back so that it gets underneath of the um, needle. Okay. So you don't want to start out here. You want to get your foot and bring your fabric back so it starts there. And then we're going to start stitching. And you can see that I have every inch, every stitch, the machine is pushing in a pleat. Okay. Now I've got the default stitch length on, which means it's going to be, if I hadn't done, left the fabric folded, we'd be good to go. That's an easy fix. Try it again. The fabric unfolded this time. My eight series owners, if you tell your machine you have on a ruffler, your automatic needle threader will not work. You need to thread your needle before you use the needle, before you um, tell the machine you have foot number 86 on. Um, it, there's clearance, uh, it's, it's tight clearance, so it's deactivated. All right, so that's every stitch, okay? It pushes in a pleat at a standard stitch length. Now, if I go up to a, let's say a basting length, so my stitch length is now as high as it will go, I'm still on a one, You can see here is normal stitch length, and this is a stitch length of six. Okay, so you still get, you still have variation. I'll change back here. Okay, so this is a stitch length here, standard stitch length, and this is where the stitch length switches over to six. Okay, so you have the ability to vary even the amount of gathering or ruffles that you do, I am more of a consistent gatherer. So I use a lot of gathering um, on my ruffler. It takes a little bit of practice because you have to figure out, you know, especially if you have to gather something to a um, particular length, um, you, I usually start with some practice lengths of fabric. So if I know that I need to make it 50% smaller, I'm going to start with maybe 12 inch strips. I'm going to set my machine up. I'm going to gather and I'm going to measure. And I'm going to do that until I find the setting that gathers that fabric to now that started out at 12 to six inches once it's gathered. And so it takes a little bit of playing because every fabric is going to kind of gather differently. You have to do some, there's not a standard math for it, okay? Now, keep rolling over power cords and stuff. Let's look at um, a setting of six. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna move that to a six and we're going to go back to a default stitch length I'm going to feed this in. Okay. Back there. Move along. Okay. 
right? So you can see six, 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 okay? And then we can increase that stitch length just like we did before. And spread it out. You can see that maybe it takes six stitches before it pushes in another pleat. So they're a little farther apart. Okay. I'll show, I'll switch back over to the other camera one second. Let's change to a 12. And so the 12 is going to do the um, same concept. So it's going to take 12 stitches. So here is that six, okay? And then here's six with a big giant basting stitch length, okay? So very similar. This is 12, okay? That's there. So depending upon, now granted, this is one layer of fabric. If I was going to do this, here, let's do, pop that back flat. If I were to fold this in half, okay, and then feed it in to the machine. cotton like this is going to be very different if it's home deck weight or anything like that you will have to kind of play with it but there is a you know folded finished ruffle that um you know this could then be used okay and then you wouldn't have to hem it or roll hem it or finish that bottom raw edge okay that's there. Now, there is another kind of magic that the um, ruffler foot can, can use, okay? And the ruffler foot can add a piece of fabric to another piece of fabric that it is ruffling, okay? But it will stay flat, okay? So, like, I don't understand, Amy. Okay, the fabric that I want to stay flat is going underneath of the foot, okay? So I'm putting this underneath of the foot. I'm gonna take the fabric that I am going to ruffle, I'm going to put right side down into the foot, okay? So the bottom fabric, one second. The bottom fabric is right side up underneath the foot. The fabric that you wanna ruffle, we're gonna slide into the foot. It is kind of funky and awkward because one is going to move way faster than the other. Um, but don't ask me the math. Don't ask me how to make these both land and finish at the same uh, size. I haven't figured that out in my in my. Um, world yet okay so you can see only this top layer is gathering the bottom layer stay flat okay so one gathered one stayed flat and look at that voodoo okay so your upper the fabric that was underneath the foot is perfectly flat and the fabric that you gathered is gathered, okay? 
It is very much trial and error. I always oversize it and then I trim it down. So this piece, I always cut this piece bigger and then I would just trim it off even, okay? So yes, this is very, you know, bodice to, you know, bodice to a nightgown, you know, that type of thing where the underside is ruffled, that type of thing could be done in one fell swoop with a ruffler. This also, we have one more presser foot for the sewing machine. That is foot number 16. Now you're gonna look at foot 16 and you're gonna be like, what does that foot do? You mean, Amy, I don't, I, this foot, you can't tell me is gonna do anything on this machine. This is a gathering foot. This gathering foot right here in this hand is narrow, designed for five and a half millimeter machines. And this gathering foot right here is wide, designed for my machines that have nine millimeter feed dogs, okay? Both do the same exact thing. So we work with a um, straight stitch, okay? The, um, Oh, there's a trick for you. I haven't shown before. This foot does not have a slit to get your fat thread underneath. So before you put the foot on, any foot that has doesn't have a slit in it, take the needle through the location in the foot that the thread needs to go into, pull the tail, and then put your foot on the machine. This way you won't be sitting here trying to stab this thread into a hole. Now, foot number 16, we're gonna work with a straight stitch, okay? The fabric that I want to ruffle is going underneath of the foot and I'm gonna do it right side up, okay? And I'm gonna stitch. Okay, you're gonna see it start to gather. Um, if you increase the tension on your needles, okay, it will um, do some more gathering, okay, and easing. And then you can um, increase your stitch length and that will gather even more, okay? So, and then with this foot, you can do the same thing. I take the piece that I want to stay flat, put it right sides together, and I'm gonna slide it into the slit in this. This one to me is way trickier to keep lined up than the, because um, it really wants to slide out. I'm not as good at this one as I am the ruffler. And voodoo magic. <laughs> so let me show you. In this will start to gather. We can also use that foot to kind of ease things in. This is not really adjustable. Once it is stitched, it's not like you can pull on a thread and add more gathering or take away. It is kind of what it is. And then you can do the same thing that you can do on the ruffler, okay? It's just not as consistent, okay? So you can see here, if you look at it, they are every so many inches, there's a little pleat and it's gonna, you know, that this one here is truly looks like you gathered it and then attached the top piece okay so those are your techniques for the sewing machine for gathering okay we have presser feet and you can also use standard presser foot and a straight stitch with a basting and pull threads okay so now we switch to um the overlocker Okay, and that one is uh, just a couple of ways. It's not, doesn't have nearly as many feet that you can use. Let me get 
that around so that you're not. Okay, let's get to the, the serger. Okay. All right. So with the serger, now I'm not using a fancy serger here today. Okay, I'm just using a standard four thread, uh, standard overlocker, manually threads. So it's not like it has to be a fancy serger to do this. You can do a couple of things. You can use a four thread overlock and we can make adjustments. I have um, the machine threaded for three thread overlock because if I'm gathering something, I really don't need that four thread and it would be, it's a waste of thread, okay, personally. So I don't use with a four, a three thread overlock. I'm going to take the differential feed on the machine, which is a typically a knob on my Bernina's is on the right side of the machine, and we're going to take it up to a two. So that's going to speed the feed dogs up, this front feed dog on the machine, and it's going to push fabric in faster than the back feed dog is pulling. Okay, so you can see. that it will start to do a little bit of gathering, not a lot. I have a tendency to then take a needle thread, take my needle thread, um, increase the needle tension, and then start stitching. You can also increase your stitch length, okay, as well. Let me, let me do that. So you can get, you can affect how much or how little. So on an overlocker, it's very easy to um, ease things in. So, and we'll stitch. And it does a little gather. If it's not as much gathering as you like, and this is just a standard presser foot, okay? If it's not as gathery as you would like it to be, you can, I usually come in here with a pin and I'm gonna grab my needle, thread, three different color threads in here. Um, I have a tendency to make my needle thread a different color so that I can grab a hold of it. I know which one. And I can grab a hold of my needle thread and I can pull. And I can use that to adjust, increase or decrease the amount of gathering that the serger does, okay? Now, if you take your, if you choose to increase your needle tensions, okay? So let me get back here. Needle tensions I have up all the way up as high as they will go, okay? that increases it a little and then also makes it easier to pull in a little bit. When you get to the edge of your fabric, you need to decrease your needle tensions back down. You should not use the, um, should not stitch off of the fabric with your needle tensions up high because it will break your needles, okay? So your needles should always, your needle tension should always be done. Um, I just clip that thread too short. Should always be returned to normal before you go into surging into the air. Okay. Just a little tip for you. Okay. Now we do have gathering feet uh, for the machines. <laughs> So the gathering foot goes on. Spread that away. And then very much again, just like a surgery can uh, uh, um, 16 foot or anything like that, you do have the ability to um, 
um, go underneath of the foot or on top of the foot. Get this. If you come like this, or you can come like this. And you can see how much just, and all I have is a standard needle tension, differential feet of two, and a stitch length. What a difference that particular foot does. Okay. And then if you wanted to add another piece of fabric, that goes right side down through the top portion of the foot. Okay. Be an octopus and wish you had multiple arms and hands. So gathering foot, and again, you can, with the gathering foot, you can still go and grab the needle thread and adjust and gather more or less, okay? And then you have the gathering foot with attaching a flat piece of fabric to the top of it, okay? So the same things that you can do on the sewing machine, you can do on, a, on an overlocker um, in gathering, okay? We don't have quite as many presser feet. We can't gather over cord on an overlocker, but you can um, adjust and add flat pieces to gathering pieces and things along that line. Um, if you need to do a lot of gathering, like on home deck fabric and heavier weight fabric, I would highly suggest a gathering foot. But if you're just um, need to gather and ease in a little bit, then just a standard four thread overlock and pull your needle threads would be just as fine. Um, the foot that I showed, it depends upon your serger. So yes, there are gathering feet for every model or brand. Okay, so like the foot that I'm showing now, I'm surging on an, four, an L460 from Bernina. We do have gathering feet for the L8 series. We have a foot for the L4 series, and then there are brunette gathering feet as well. So yes, there are, depends upon your serger, depends upon, but gathering foot is a pretty standard presser foot for gathering. Do I have any questions about gathering? I did not think that I would talk that long today. I thought, oh, this will be short and sweet. Apparently I'm full of words. Apparently my Dr. Pepper's kicked in. All right. Oh yes, we see dental floss does work well too. So zigzagging over dental floss um, or, cor or um, doing the gathering stitch with foot three using dental floss. That is another good one. I always forget about dental floss. Look, I'm gonna have to go get all those little tiny packages that I have collected from the dentist office and throw in my sewing kit. We do use, um, oh, there's my box here. These dental floss threaders. These are very helpful for threading your loopers on your machines, especially if the um, um, thread is fuzzy or decorative and you just can't, can't quite get it to the eye of that uh, looper. Um, piping on a serger is, on the smaller side, I don't, I consider it more like garment piping than I would put it on big giant pillows. So we do have a multi-purpose foot piping foot. So um, he's that big, okay, for the most part. So piping is, um, I don't know the exact millimeters. I tried looking that up yesterday for somebody, but I have to go, I need to go relate it back to uh pipe it cording sizes because that um, cording sizes, you can either find it in 16 or 30 seconds, or you find it in a piping size 120. And um, 
determining that. But I would definitely say it's on the smaller side of home deck and garment and would see it more in garment fabric. Uh, baby piping for like um, uh, baby garments, children's garments, things along that lines uh, for that. All right. I don't see any other questions. Well, I hope that you have um, enjoyed this little informational session on how to gather. I hope you picked up a little nugget of wisdom that I had today. And I hope that you enjoyed the rest of your weekend. We will be here next Saturday morning uh, for Virtual Breakfast Club um, for a small business Saturday. And we're gonna do a little holiday crafting. Um, I have a couple of little crafts and you know, fun stuff because what's better than, you know, making, making an ornament or making something to decorate the house when you are um, getting um, the house ready for the season. So I have a couple of non-so, low-so fun things that you can do with grandkids if you see them this year, if not, but um, just fun stuff. So we'll do that next Saturday at 8.30 and then, um, yeah. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me and we will see you soon. Bye everybody. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. I always forget, happy Thanksgiving.